This is a game review about a board game named Sequence Cats and my experience playing Sequence Cats with kids, mom, you know, family. Sequence Cats is a game marketed under the name Jax. And just in case you don't like cats, there's also Sequence Dogs for you, presumably made to the same quality and quite possibly works with the same inherent logic. Jax also makes a wide variety of other board games about which I know absolutely nothing whatsoever but on the other side of the sheet many of the games here mention the word sequence in them so those presumably have at least something in common with the internal logic of sequence cats. In this review I'm gonna stay with sequence cats. So sequence cats is a brilliant game that combines strategy and logic on one hand and an element of chance or randomness on the other. The two together make it engaging for the whole family. Just as it says on the brochure, ages 7 through adult. It really is so because the logic and strategy element of the game makes it engaging for the adult as well as the chance and randomness element makes it engaging for the kids they have a fi fighting chance against adults and adults can't just dominate the game because the chance elements in the game just stop them so sequence catch is basically a connect five game that's interrupted or has this chance element built into it that limits an adult from winning all the time let me explain how this works Connect 5 is basically the same as Connect 4 if you remember the Connect 4 game where the aim of the game is to have four of your chips line up vertically or horizontally or on a diagonal somewhere on the board this sequence cats game you have to line up five of your chips just as the rules state here five of the same colored chips either up or down or across or diagonally so if you take a look at the board green won this game green has five chips lining up in this direction here they moved around a little bit because the cat walked on it so in terms of logic and strategy and I was green I tried to take the middle of the board as well as ideally as much as I can have some green chips elsewhere evenly distributed that gets me the greatest mathematical chance of something lining up somewhere eventually in this connect 5 game as opposed to trying to work in a corner or work myself into a corner or paint myself into a corner I have far fewer chances and directions of lining anything up in a in five in any direction because it's a corner so as far as adult strategizing goes I try to take the middle of the board as well as spread out green chips kinda evenly everywhere but the chance element in the game prohibits me to do so I lose about 30 percent of the time whenever I play against kids because what I pull from this deck here you can see there's a deck of cards here which is, which is shuffled and has the images of the cats on them so whatever uh, hand I get from the deck that's what my choices are limited to very simply so if I have everybody has four cards and uh, whatever card you choose oh that's five all right we'll make it four so everybody starts with four cards and if I want to play the Bengal kitty card and I'm gonna get you a close-up of the images as well as the text and the images on the board as well so the Bengal kitty you can see the Bengal kitty there you can kind of match the same image to image the Bengal kitty repeats on the opposite side of the board as well right there it's not the same column it may not be the same row but all the images on the two halves of the board repeat they are not symmetrical but they are duplicates of each other so 
I only have four choices to place one of my chips at a time. I don't have unlimited options to put my chips wherever I can end the game the fastest. That's not how it works. There isn't free choice. In terms of placing your chips, you're limited to what you have in your hand. And these options, some of these might have already been taken, such as, let me see, ragamuffin on this side is here. You can see the tail there, the bushy tail there, so that's ragamuffin on this half of the board. And on the other half of the board, it's already been covered up by another chip. This one here. You can see Ragamuffin does happen to repeat in the same column, but not on the same row, and it's already been taken, so I can only place my chip here if I want to play Ragamuffin. If I want to play the Bengal Kitty card, I have two choices, but they're both along the edge of the board, so I might want to do something else, such as the Burmese Kitty, which is here on this half of the board and repeats there in the corner that far corner is the Burmese I really don't want to get into a corner I might play this one so this is how strategy and logic is limited your choices the number of choices are limited to four or maybe maybe eight especially at the beginning of the game but often it's fewer than that to help the kids there are two more chance elements, a purr card and a meow card. The meow card lets you remove one of your opponent's chip from anywhere on the board. And I was trying to build five horizontally this way earlier, but blue, my fuzzy baby, removed one of my green chips and gave it back to me, so I couldn't do five horizontally because I wasn't getting the cards to complete and uh, I had the per card in my hand which allows me to place my chip anywhere I please on the card so this one bypasses the element of chance and helps me as an adult with logic and strategy to connect five somewhere if I have to I didn't use it I couldn't I didn't need to I just had four cards eventually or, or cards in a sequence that allowed me to place five checkers or um, chips in this direction and get my connect five but uh, like I said adults despite all their scheming and strategizing and logic lose about 30% of the time because of the randomness factors that negate adult skills so Let's take a look at some of these images. Here is Tabby. Let me just lift up the camera a little bit. The images are really good quality. You can see the direction of the fur, how it runs. You can see the length of the fur. In some images you can see the whiskers on the kitty, the eye color on the kitty. You can talk about the pictures with your kids. And the cats all have different body positions. Some of them, this one is walking away, that one is standing, sitting, whatever, still. They all have different. This one is a playful kitty. Uh, this one is a sleepy kitty. Okay, they all have different body positions. In terms of text, and, and all the images are really nice. So in terms of text, let me just get you a sharp image here the words are or the description about the breed helps build a kid's vocabulary so here you can talk about what's affectionate or what's blush mean or what's curls okay on every card there are some words that uh, you can either pronounce with the kids or discuss with the kids in terms of What's Persian? Find the Persian card and describe it and compare the cats, you know, compare and contrast. What's domestic? What's affectionate? What's disposition? So some of these words, you know, need a dictionary or whatever. That's exactly the point of the game. 
is to engage with your kids and teach them vocabulary as well as strategy. Okay, so that's how the descriptions on the cards go. The images, I'm going to take you off the tripod. The images are equally high quality on the board. Here is the Bengal Kitty. I'm just working against the camera's shadow here. There, you can see it's a high quality image. They don't peel, they don't rub off. Really well made. I only played this game about 20 times, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the images are really good quality. And I strongly recommend this game for the whole family because of the because of the multiple layers of interaction that's possible with uh, between kids and adults so whether it be words or describing and discussing a picture do you think the kitty is sleepy do you think the kitty is waiting for being fed do you think the kitty is waiting for or looking at the siblings or looking at mommy whatever so mm, there are there's a great number of of uh, possibility to interact with your players, interact with your kids. Oh, just because it's me, I also have a micrometer. I measured the thickness of the card. It's 0.29 millimeters thick. The cards are on good quality paper. You can see they none of them are bent or curled or whatever broken yet. Of course, it's paper, so you can tear it eventually. But they are made thick enough and resilient enough and you can see it's shiny or whatever it's waxy enough so none of them are dirty we only played about 20 times or so so that's how sequence cats works it's a really good game i really like it and appreciate it all the design features that went into it it's a really good engaging game for the whole family strongly recommend it